Hey guys, hope you all are doing well. Just let me, um, make this thing bigger for a sec. Um, Um, I was watching a video with a group of pastors and they were having a conversation with each other about different things. And one of the things that came up was, was the issue of social media. Um, now I love social media, uh, myself, um, I love the fact that we can reach people from anywhere uh, through Instagram, through Facebook, through YouTube. Um, and there's this whole discussion about social media being right or wrong, good or bad or whatever. And th there was this whole debate on whether pastors should be on social media. And my opinion, opinion is um, just my two cents as I was watching this is I was thinking about the ministry of Jesus and how he ministered and how he walked and how he talked and how he um, met people where they were and just minister to them from where they were. And I s sincerely believe that if Jesus was walking the earth today, he's with us, he's in us, but he's not physically here in a physical body. But if he was, I, I totally believe he would be on social media why? One reason, because it's where people are. And people, um, you know, you could have a lot of debates about followers and, you know, influencers and uh, people leaving nasty comments online and getting involved in that rabbit hole of, oh my God, this person left a nasty comment or, I have to answer back or whatever. But the bottom line is people. Jesus went to where people are, where people were hurting. Jesus gave people what they needed and people were just grateful. And there were a lot of people that hated Jesus. Um, he had 12 uh, men uh, that he discipled and taught like kind of like interns or lay ministers, people that he taught, um, people that he coached, people that he um, spent time with, mentors. I would say the disciples were mentees and these guys were just ordinary guys like today they would probably be uh businessmen they would probably be uh people you know people from all different walks of life and these 12 people that he mentored for three years and he taught them everything he knew but other people he went to where they were like <clears throat> excuse me he totally just went to where they were he totally taught where they were um and he totally brought hope to them where they were and like my concern is when you spend all this time talking about whether social media is good or bad, which preacher has which followers and 
which preacher is doing this, which preacher is doing that. You're wasting your time when you're uh, when you're concerned about that. I'm talking to leaders now. The only concern that you should have as a leader is are people getting the gospel? Are people getting the fact that Jesus died, Jesus lived, Jesus died, he rose again and he loves them and he wants to give them new life in his, in him. That's the only reason that um, we should be worried about it. Now, the tools that we use to get there can be varied. And I think just, um, I think social media and money are just tools. They're not good or bad. It's just how you use them. It's like a hammer. A hammer could be used by Habitat for Humanity to build beautiful homes. And, and a hammer could be used on somebody's skull to hit them until, until they're hurt or they pass away. So it's just social media is not good or bad in itself. It's a tool. It's how you use it and how you're able to process it. And with, with God, he has to be the master of everything. So even if you're not a preacher, you, ha um, you have to ask the Lord, Lord, what is the tool? How do you want me to use this tool? Do you want me to use it to share uh, pictures with my family and friends? Do you want me to use this tool to make people laugh? Do you want me to use this tool to preach? How do you want me to use this tool? So if the Lord is behind your social, social media, um, it will be not hassle-free because nothing will be hassle-free but it will be much easier to um to uh, to um to achieve your calling on social media and when you ask the lord what do you want me to do with this tool you'll be surprised how he'll just give you like um, divine um, wisdom, how to deal with people's comments and how to deal with if people don't like your hair and how to deal with other people. And he'll give you a sifter to be able to sift through the nonsense. And also, everybody's calling is different. So your church on social media has a different, if you're a pastor, um, your church on social media has a different calling than another church. And your ministry on social media is different. See, I'm not, uh, I'm not Michael Todd, I'm not Stephen Burdick, I'm not T.D. Jakes, I can only be me. I can't, God has not called me to compare myself to those guys, wonderful men as they are. I am not called to be who they are. There's already a Mike Todd. There's already a C.D. Jakes. There's already a Stephen Furtick. The world doesn't need another one. The world needs a Rachel Esdale. And I think that's the problem 
when we come to social media, we don't ask the Lord, what is our purpose on here? Is our purpose to share with family and friends, our vacations, um, and our big houses to make them feel bad? Or is our purpose to connect um, with, with people we haven't seen in a while? So if we let God guide our social media, if we let him give us wisdom on how to handle this tool and stop just comparing ourselves, oh, to this person and that person and use it as a tool for ministry. And I'm not saying you can't make people laugh. I'm not saying you can't be silly. I'm the silliest person ever, but I'm saying you need to be mindful that in your silliness, in your um, in your craziness, in your funny postings, you are still a child of God, and you represent Him. And I'm not saying perfection, but I'm saying to be to be aware of that you're representing Christ and to make the purpose clear with him as to why you're on YouTube. Are you on YouTube to gain followers? If that person has more followers, will you drive yourself crazy? Oh, how can I get more followers and how can I do this? And I, I said to God, what, whoever you give me, I will serve. So if two people watch this video, great. If a million people watch this video and it goes over all over the world and people start share it, great. But I'm still determined my calling is still the same, no matter who's watching me. My kingdom, my kingdom cloud comes from who I am in Christ. It doesn't come from other people. It doesn't come from um, how, what I have. It doesn't come from how I talk. It doesn't come from whether I'm white or black. It comes from the Lord. And I know for some people, it's it's so hard not to get caught in this rabbit hole. But just even take taking little steps um, towards this will help you um, just understand your purpose on social media because. I think if we were to use social media correctly for God intended purposes, we Christ can use us to save the world. But it's all this comparison stuff and whatever that drives us crazy or when people leave mean comments. If people leave mean comments, um and this is for me. But if people leave mean comments, what I do is um, I use the breathe method. Like I breathe in and then I weigh it and then I breathe out. So so what in this is there in the is there anything in this comment for my learning? If not, then I just throw it out and I try not to take it personally. It's really hard sometimes, but um, sometimes that person, their project, the reason why they're so mean is they're, project they're projecting their meanness onto you. And please, for God's sake, if you have a beef with somebody, don't put it on social media. Um, pick up the phone, 
call them, talk to them, I think, or if you want to use social media, message them privately. We don't need to hear your private uh, beef with that person. I think um, one of the things about social media is it is it's given us a wonderful platform, but it's also given us a reason to hide. We need we need to um, talk to each other again. We need to pick up the phone in this time and just say, "Hey, I'm feeling hurt." I'm feeling sad. And if you can't do that to the person, if you don't feel strong enough, because I know for me, sometimes I'm a very internal person, so I deal with things internally. So sometimes for me, when I'm when I feel like I can't talk to the person, like I'm so angry, what I do is I record it on my computer. I have a recording device on my computer. I just say whatever it is, and then I listen to it. And then once it's out, I delete it. It it works for me. But you have to find another way to get your anger out than to hurt somebody on social media. Because the purpose of social media is not to hurt or to or to scar it's to stay connected and too many people use social media for terrible means and it's so sad that like the the follower like you have two million followers so that makes you somebody. It doesn't. It's just a bunch of um, people that click on your page. It's all about, for me, it's all about content. It's about who you are as a person. So a lot of people on YouTube and on Facebook say, uh, Rachel, follow me. Like, and I have to weigh what am I following? What do you have to offer? Uh, what am I getting when I get on your page or on your channel? And if that that thing is negative, I don't bother following them because it's not like I'm, I mean to be mean. It's just that I'm very selective because I have to be... Um, I'm very careful with what and who gets in my psyche. And the thing with social media is that if you're not careful with who you get in your psyche, um, the devil will use it as a rabbit hole to bring self-doubt and to bring anger and to bring mistrust and misuse and all these negative emotions. Um, so use social media as a tool. Ask God the purpose for you on social media if you're in ministry. And if you're not, same thing, just as a person. Lord, what is my purpose on social media? Some people's purpose is to advertise their business. Some people's purpose is to share with their family. Some people's purpose is to uh, preach the gospel. Some people's purpose is to share poetry. Everyone has a unique purpose on social media. And everyone else, everyone need to, needs to ask the Lord, what is my unique purpose? And don't compare you, your purpose with, with another, another person's purpose. I heard one of the people say, oh, this pastor has uh, this number of views and, and that number of views. I'm, I'm like, buddy, who cares? 
just as long as people are getting the gospel, getting the fact that Jesus loves them, getting the fact that Jesus died, he rose again, and he's there to forgive their sins, and he's there to take them to glory when they die, and he's there to give them a purposeful life more than they have ever dreamed in their lives. That's that's okay. And no matter who you are, there is someone out there for you. There is some, there's a ministry that you will connect to no matter who you are. And I said, the, and I always say this, the reasons why pastors are so varied and different is because people are varied and different. So somebody, it's the same spirit, but a different pastor and different techniques of preaching. And some pastors wear holes in their jeans and some pastors wear suits and ties. As long as the person is getting the word of God, that's cool. Like, and a question came to my mind, like, what if that person wasn't on social media, but there was somebody who used social media who needed to hear God through them, through what they were giving to the world? And they weren't on social media because they were worried about uh, what this other person was doing. And I was thinking that would be really sad. So use, again, use social media as a tool. It's not good or bad, it's a tool. Could be used for good or evil. Uh, and find out your purpose, your individual purpose, your ministry's purpose if you're a pastor. Um, on social media, some People only, they use it to advertise their business and that's great. That's their purpose on social media. For some people, it's personal and they use it to contact friends or whatever. Um, so yeah. So, and, and make God the head of your social media account. Now, I'm not saying to overload it with scripture verses. I'm saying that let God guide you how to use it effectively for your personality, for what you do. Let God be the guide of that. Because if he's the guide of that, it will be much easier on you. I'm not saying the criticism won't come. I'm not saying the nasty comments won't come. But I'm saying God will give you the wisdom to handle that stuff when it does come. And God will give you the ideas that he wants you to have regarding social media. Little creative things that you could that you can do, uh, but with your personality to spread the gospel. See, a few months ago, I started Storytime Sunday because I love telling stories. And I love sharing the word of God using fictional stories. And I'm a fiction writer and I'm good at coming up with stuff off the cuff. So I started Storytime Sunday because that is another part of my gifting that I wasn't utilizing. Because for me, physically writing, because um, I have a disability, is tough. And editing is even tougher. So I thought, um, why don't I just sit online on Sunday and tell stories? And that's where Storytime of Sunday come from. So I use social media um, for another purpose, not only my preaching that I've been doing for nine years on YouTube and for about almost a year on here live, but now I, I've i added to that and, and I've told my fictional stories for months. And, 
and this weekend is episode 21, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I will see you later, you guys. Thank you for watching me. I really appreciate it. Bye.